Mr. and Mrs. Palmer, I understand you've been referred by your urologist. Is that right, Mr. Dr. Palmer? Dr. Danforth. And the nature of the difficulty was what? Well, uh, I, uh, problems with our uh, physical problem with me, I thought. He took all the various tests and mm -hmm. so forth and uh, then gave me a um, clean bill of health and uh, <laughs> then referred us to you, which uh, was a bit of a shocker. You've been married, you mentioned 23 years, is that correct? That's right. Yes. And your age is? 45. 45, and you are? 43. 43. Do you have children? Yes, we have two children. And their ages are? 20 and 18. Uh, what happened? Can you? Well, I uh, have been unable to, uh, on several occasions, uh, get uh, uh, an erection, uh, an erection. And on those occasions when I've been able to do so, I've uh, been not able to maintain the erection. And uh, as I say, I thought it was a physical thing, you know, mm -hmm. prostrate or some, you know, kind of thing. I don't know, whatever. But See? it turns out that there's nothing physically wrong, and so that's why we're here. Well, well, for 23 years, we've had a very good relationship, and all of a sudden... There's nothing there. Oh. Nothing there. All right. He's just not all there. Now, give me your account of the first experience you had with your uh, loss of erection or impotence, or however you term this. What, what happened from your point of view? I was uh, made uh, head of the sales department of mm -hmm. the firm. I just Actually, gotten a promotion. About six months ago, they had an office party for him. And how did you feel at that time? Certainly not impotent, to tell okay. you that. <laughs> Quite good. All right. I came home. And uh, I had a few to drink. Uh, certainly not as much as, certainly not as much as she indicates. Uh, and uh, I attempted to make love, but you know, perhaps I did have too much, and I figured, well, too much to drink. Mm -hmm. And uh, the two or three times after that, in the uh, succeeding days that we attempted to make love, um, uh, the same thing occurred. Either I uh, got an erection and it didn't maintain at all. I didn't get one at all. Or I had this experience of losing your potency, your erection. Mm -hmm. and do you still have erections when you awaken in the morning? Well, it's hard. <laughs> I don't know whether you'd call them erections. You know, I, I go to the bathroom and then it's over with, you know. Uh, I would hardly call it a sexual. Uh, it certainly doesn't seem okay. like a sexual thing to me. lost your erection and you failed with your wife after the promotion party. Right. And, um, and there have been and, no affairs. And you, no affairs, <laughs> and you, and you tried again. Several times, uh, three or four times, I would say. And now you've left it alone. Here's how long he's left it alone. Within the last five months, then I'd say, uh, what we've been doing is just strictly avoiding contact. How are you explaining this to yourself? Well, uh, my best friend Jerry uh, said I was in menopause. So I, <laughs> I told him to take his my doll and go home. He doesn't even want to try anymore. Well, you know, why doesn't that, he want to try anymore? That's because it's, you know, it, it, you know, you fail so many times and then it, it's no longer worth trying. Vicious cycle that he's caught up in right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, It's something he wants, but he's so afraid he's going to fail, he can't relax. Which brings us to this. When was the last time you could will yourself into an erection, Mr. Palmer? Oh, geez, I never thought of it as willing myself. In. Can't do it, can you? No, I suppose not. In fact, the more he tries, the less he's likely to succeed. But the whole situation is embarrassing. Right. I mean, you know, it's a, uh, I mean, let's face it, I can't cut the mustard. You look rather uh, upset or tense, Mrs. Palmer. What, how do you see this problem? What, what's your emotional reaction to it? Well, I guess I'm really very hurt and uh, 
I was pretty angry about it. Why should it have happened to you kind of a feeling, you mean? Or? Yes. I mean, I understand that he feels badly about it, and I really don't want to make his problem worse. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I mean, let's not, by, let's think of, let's not just, well, let's not just think of it as my problem, okay? Kids have left, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it's all empty nest kind of living. Mm -hmm. And yes. you're looking for more now from this husband of yours when he comes near you than you used to be. You used to have the kids to talk about. Now you've got only him to get some kind of satisfaction from. Satisfaction from. Mm -hmm. Yes, I guess so. So just when you want him the most, he's able to give you less. So you're mm -hmm. frustrated. Mm -hmm. Is there some way you can relate romantically without going um, to the negative experience of intercourse itself? Is there any way you can relate sensually or physically without having intercourse? What do you think about that? Could you? It's like being back in high school. Or... <laughs> what's your response? Uh, what's your I got reaction? to have the same, you know, well, you know, drive in, here we come. Drive in, here we come. So let's suppose that we make an agreement. That between now and the next time you come, next week, uh, no intercourse, just by agreement, no matter how excited or romantic or concerned you get, no intercourse. Because he's got to be kept away from having to go through something that he's anxious about. And the both of you need to get back to fun. It sounds to me as though you've got a sex life that's either a routine or it's on the edge of work. No, there wasn't. We're not an X-rated movie, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try to have fun and hold off on the intercourse and see what happens. Let's just learn from it. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, then we can get back in, uh, get back in a week and uh, follow up on this. Okay. Thank you, Doctor.